Dr. Stückelberger, can you hear us? Yeah. Can you tell us what you do? Uh, what is your background? Yes, I'm, um, I've been my whole life a scientist, actually. So, health scientist. Um, I started in biology, then I, I, have a, I have a complicated CV, as many women who survive in the academic world. But um, mainly, I've been doing research and, and training, um, teaching my whole life. But more so, uh, more and more, uh, since very early on, I was in WHO uh, doing my master degree on mental health differential in diagnosis, uh, cross-cultural diagnosis, uh, which I, I even posted on my website. And then um, I was taken in a geriatric unit with WHO collaborative studies and the Hospital of Geneva, uh, Switzerland, um, to do research. Um, and research was always and more and more for political decisions. So um, since 90, the 90s, um, I've been deputy director of the Swiss National Program on Aging, 12 million francs, and we had to do science for politics, for politicians, um, decision making and for the people. Uh, and then um, I was also, um, you know, a deputy director at the same time for the Interdisciplinary Center of Gerontology Geriatrics. So my first part of life was a lot on aging, the life course, health, differential men, women, um, a lot of um, uh, multi multidisciplinary factors. And I was paid by the Faculty of Medicine, although I started in psychology, then I went to, to medicine very quickly. So I did a PhD uh, on population, aging, health, subjective versus objective health on a big cohort. Because of my positions, I collaborated very quickly with WHO. Mm -hmm. We created an international network on aging. This is how I understood how more and more how the United Nations works, how WHO works. Uh, since 94, I was expert there, um, taken as a rapporteur, a young rapporteur speaking all those mm -hmm. languages. <laughs> and and, um, and uh, then uh, the politicians started to ask me to do events and I organized twice the UN Open Days. Mm -hmm. So that was my first part of life. I got a prize from Kofi Annan for doing so much work in science for politicians, science for people. Then the second part was from 2000 on in, in public health. And this is where uh, I started more and more to be in WHO in the capacity of um, on the research ethics um, committee for four years. Um, you know, I have all the credentials, so no conflict of interest, everything. Uh, and then what happened in these courses where I was teaching public health, actually my PhD, I have always been on public health. It was, it's just not... Um, topic that is recognized academically. You have to know that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's start, starting now. So the uh, Geneva University asked me uh, to um, take a mandate with WHO because I was so involved with the United Nations. And um, I did that and it was on international health regulation. And that was in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a very interesting mandate. So I was collaborating closely with WHO Lyon, the education program, and WHO Geneva, because I know everybody in the alert and response unit. What is interesting in, in what I'm going to say is I've experimented uh, the, the will to stop training people on, in, on preparedness plan, because we, were, we did an implementation program for three years with Georgetown University, Pretoria, and me for the University of Geneva. It was, you know, the whole international health regulation is to prepare countries and member states to be ready for a pandemic, to prevent a pandemic, and to act quickly and readily. Mm -hmm. So the, the aim then, I thought was very noble and very good. And I said, you know, I, I helped WHO Europe to also do a preparedness plan for the Eastern Bloc um, during a workshop. I have all the documents, I have everything. Uh, and then we, we won the um, renewal of the mandate of three years in 2013, and suddenly they announced that there is no fund. Japan has not paid for that. When we had not trained all the regions at all, we had trained part of Africa, part of um, uh, Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, uh, Europe part, uh, America part, but it was definitely not, and I, I always said we should do a publication of training, and they never did. I did one for ethics. So, so I saw there, that there is something wrong already. Then I started teaching this in the University of Geneva on the Global Health and Human Rights Summer School that I organized 
with colleagues and I was in charge of the International Health Regulation Week, which I was doing. And WHO, Bruce, Pro, uh, uh, Bruce Plotkin, a lawyer who was working on the international regulation in WHO, came to tell me that I cannot teach this. And I told him, uh, what, who are you to tell me what I can teach or not? And I, we had a, a lunch in WHO that was quite muscly because I said, it's my right to teach whatever I want. And I don't understand why you don't teach this. I was in, involved also with the European Union and I, I, mean, I have a lot of expertise in the international world. So that, that's where I am now. And if I come to you, um, I mean, I, you have, I have more to say, but I, I want to go to the topic. So yeah. uh, the international health regulation was adopted in 2005, but implemented and come into force in 2008. Uh -huh. And from 2008, they wanted to do implementation training for all the regions. Yes. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. In particular, when I see it in the context of what uh, Frau Behrendt just told us. Because what I did not mention previously was that I also did country missions for the IHR uh, secretariat and also know Bruce Blutkins. <laughs> Oh, you know him. He worked there as well and did some guidance issues and things. So uh, I think we have to speak to each other. <laughs> okay, great. You know them. Yeah. <laughs> Switzerland is the center, and I speak that as a Norwegian. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the center of a lot of uh, corruption uh, because there we have one of the most important NGO. It's Gavi, the Global Alliance for Vaccine Initiative which the foundation Bill Gates has, yeah, yeah. which has, I tell you, I, I have the papers, mm -hmm. total immunity, total, total. They can do whatever they want. The police cannot come and look into their computer. When the pandemic happened, uh, what would they say is pandemic? Uh, I was in North, uh, South Korea for a, a, a big meeting uh, and I realized there is something not right and not corresponding to the international health regulation when I traveled back and. I think this is very weird. The, the news says one thing and people don't behave the same in the airports. Um, so I, I started to look and, and I, I realized over this whole year, uh, all the breaches compared to the international health regulation and the preparedness plan. And I'm, I'm working now for a lawyer in Quebec um, uh, who's called uh, Dominique Desjardins. You know, I organized the Stockholm Peace Summit post-COVID where I invited you and you couldn't come. And, and um, he was there with um, two other lawyers, uh, Rocco Galati and uh, um, Maître Brousa for France. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think we will solve this public health problem <laughs> and um, population economic problem without lawyers. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what um, I'm doing now with Maître Desjardins, I'm finding out a bit more. And I have uh, four points I, I can talk to you about. Mm -hmm. First, but, you know, as uh, Sylvia is there, she, she's great because <laughs> she can confirm and, and just uh, compliment. Um, first, that this obligation is signed by 19, 194 member states, but it is embedded in the con constitution of WHO. So they don't need to adopt it. It is immediately approved and it's an obligation. So it is legally binding Which directly. One? What, the international health regulations or what? Mm -hmm. Yes, the international. And this is the trick, because nobody knows this. It's in the papers. It's, but you have to go and dig. And it's what, you know, it's, that's what I'm finding out. You have to go and dig mm -hmm. the inconsistencies of everything they're doing to see that they are directing as a corporate agency, WHO. Because on, the, on behalf of the health security of the international health regulation, they have made a third edition because the 2005 edition is the second edition. The first one was in 1969. Mm -hmm. But the booklet of 2005, you know, um, I don't know if you've seen it. Or the, the booklet, um, this one, you see, is, is, is mm -hmm. 2005, but it's written second edition. And the third edition comes, I assume, just now in 2014, would enter into force in 2016. Mm -hmm. And this has made the health security a dictatorship where a director general can decide on his own to sell vaccines, to uh, sell the PCR instead of all the documents that say you have to have a confirmation of a clinical and of uh, there are other tests than PCR. 
So I'm finding out uh, some inconsistencies that have not been used at all in law. Uh, so the first one is this, it's an obligation. So if it's an obligation, what Tedros, I'll call him Tedros, says uh, this uh, secretary general terrorist <laughs> in WHO, when he says something, all the, all the countries has to have to obey under, under law. All the member states of the WHO, everyone yes. who signed the agreement with the WHO, because automatically, because as you're saying, this is part of the constitution of the WHO, this is binding law for everyone who is a member of the WHO. Right. Okay. With two reservations. There are two countries, because I was teaching that, so I know, I know. There were two countries in 2009, in the second edition, that made reservations, and it's very interesting. It's the USA, and it is uh, Iran. Uh -huh. <laughs> They don't want to obey to WHO completely. Mm -hmm. the, the 2016 uh, third edition. Mm -hmm. What happened in WHO, but uh, maybe Sylvia, you were, you were there when it happened. Bill Gates was already around. He was already, you know, mingling, saying that he pays so much money. But he became visible when, I think it was in 2017, or you correct me, mm -hmm. that he, oh, it's, I know this through my colleagues there, he requested to be part of the executive board of WHO like a member state. Ah. Oh. And it's incredible. I was, I said, how can he dare to do this? And they, they went to the vote. The executive board um, uh, meets every January. So, and it changes every year. And the lobby, they tried to lobby the, the countries. Of course, he tried to, to bribe. But it's, it's, a, it's really an event because it is not mentioned. Maybe we can get to the minutes of the executive board. He, he, they even accepted that he would be considered as a member state because of the money he gives. So this is unprecedented in a constitution of member states. Is he now which, being considered as a member state? Uh, not officially. But I, not, uh, not that I know. Not that I know. Maybe But there are documents. Officially, yes. And that's well, probably because of the because that's why he has this immunity, right? He he has total immunity in Switzerland. Okay. Unofficially, he probably holds that kind of status, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, I, I can, I can tell. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you why it is very suspicious. Is because I think he has done something with every member state the same contracts. What I found out with Swiss Medic, Swiss Medic is the FDA of Switzerland, mm -hmm. is um, because I, I gave the paper to a journalist and now I don't even find it. I can't find it. Again. The Swiss Medic has signed a contract with Bill Gates and WHO. Aha. And this is is. Abnormal. <laughs> so, so basically, he literally tried to lobby him, himself into the WHO as a member state to basically found the country of Bill Gates. That's basically what he did. I mean, at that point, he would have been basically a one-man country. Yes, he, well, he could be a dictator because he can yeah. influence the. But, but the fact that he was not accepted by vote—that's why the minutes would be very interesting by vote uh, to be a member state, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, he then, then started to sign papers for countries, that's my hypothesis, because he did it with Swiss Medic. So WHO, Bill Gates, and the country uh, in charge of accrediting treatments and vaccination are signing contracts. So, so and, he, he, didn't, he didn't get in uh, in official capacity, he didn't get voted in, so then he tried to circumvent that and just basically went around the middleman. Well, yeah, how can you, if you're a country, sign a contract between three signatures, Bill Gates, a country, and WHO, because WHO signs with countries, but not, and even that I find pretty weird. You know, why does WHO have to sign with a country uh, an agreement? I, I don't know. You see, this is a corporate agency doing that, but not... WHO, I, I mean, correct me, Sylvia, but, but um, w, that WHO accepts to have the, a company, a private company, selling a merchant, signing together the three to make the surveillance and to choose the medication. I think that, you know, Swiss Medic had posted it on the website. I think that every country, that's my hypothesis, they have done this everywhere. That's why everybody says the same thing in the train, the same message, 
every week there's a the same thing happening tell us more about this immunity how does this yeah, work yeah yeah okay uh yeah i can i can uh, find again the document it's mm -hmm. also in german because switzerland is also in german and you can have a look it is it, it's shocking it's the the normally ngos because i have been an ngo and i'm an ngo activist uh, uh, with academics in the un since 20 years mm -hmm. an ngo has a status of accreditation to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. You can come and speak, you're an observer, but you cannot intervene uh, in many things. And you don't have immunity. If you open an office, mm -hmm. you are submitted to taxation. Mm -hmm. Gavi has no taxes to pay. This, this, already this is very strange. The Switzerland is hosting an NGO, international, who doesn't pay taxes and who has total immunity. There are clauses in there, you can just read them. I will find it for you. I mean, the police cannot come and take a computer. If there is a criminal problem in the office, the police cannot get in. So they're criminally immune. Yes, criminally immune. Immune from any criminal sanctions. Yeah, I yeah. just, just yeah. looked it up. They, they have qualified diplomatic immunity uh -huh. with, within their, within their um, area of operations. Since what, what's the name? Uh, I think uh, they, ha they have qu qualified diplomatic immunity and they don't qualified. pay taxes t uh, since 2009. I just looked it up. They uh, ratified a law in Switzerland in 2009. Genau, da, dafür das nochmal bestätigen, das weiß ich auch alles. Und das ist auch Untersuchungsgegenstand dieser Shared Responsibilities Untersuchung. Sehr die gut. Ah, von daher weiß ich das nämlich, dass die es aufgenommen hat. Das ist von 20, 20, 2014 die Arbeit. Um, und, um, und ja, also wie gesagt, ich kann das nur bestätigen. Was ich habe gesagt, weil du gesagt hast, dass niemand weiß, dass es eigentlich auch auf Wikipedia publiziert wurde. Ja, aber die Leute wissen es nicht, weil niemand weiß. Weil es ist das Ding, niemand weiß. Ja, die Details, wir denken nicht, dass es möglich ist. Ja, exakt. Als Bürger. Das ist, warum wir nicht denken über das, das ist, warum wir nicht denken über, wo die Basis für all das ist. Because we simply accept what is being told. And now we're going to start thinking, and I think many more people are going to start thinking, because this is extremely important information. Um, it is, everything is out there in the open, but most people don't want to see it because they don't believe that that can be possible. And I mean, it's not, it's not about saying that anyone's doing, you know, running around harvesting organs from African children or something like that, something horrible like that. Nobody's claiming that Bill Gates is doing that or anyone is doing that. But the, he the, could. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem. We as a society should ask ourselves, should we endow any single person or any conglomerate of persons with such incredible amount of power without any kind of... Um, any kind of demo, democratic responsibility and le uh, le legitimacy behind themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the question we should ask ourselves, not yeah. if somebody's going to abuse that power, because the abuse is inevitable. As, as, as soon as somebody has this kind of power, they're going to abuse it. Not today, not tomorrow, but eventually they're, they're going to abuse it. Because it abuse simply, it. Yeah, but simply because they can. Mm -hmm. But why you know them and not us? You know, I have NGOs. Why can they do it and not another NGO? Yeah. This oh, yeah. is the question. Yeah. And also there's a, there's a difference with like a normal diplomatic Im immunity because this is usually these people come and they just whatever, you know, work on relationships and maybe they have a speeding ticket or I don't know. I mean, yeah, of course, they have kind of political legitimacy. Also, yeah, but because not in this case. Know, Nobody ever voted for him. So, so, but no, someone comes into another country and has like total immunity, also for like all business transactions and all that. I mean, that is really that's crazy. But it's absolutely. They have crazy. less immunity than Bill Gates. Apparently, that's my friends telling me. So maybe you know more. But the the diplomats don't have a total immunity. No, they don't. Yeah. A, a similar revelation when we were dabbling with uh, European agencies, um, we found out that in the in the uh, the national regulations about, for example, the European Central Bank in Frankfurt, they have they have literal diplomatic immunity, and there is no regulation to um, to lift it. So, the, the 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 head of the European Central Bank, for example. If he says, I don't want any kind of seizure of my computers, or I don't want the police in here, they can't go in. Yeah. It's, it, 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 literally, it's, it literally says that in the law. When he says no, they can't do it. Yeah. And that's basically the same for every European agency. And there are no 
regulations in place, um, who would be responsible to, to lift that immunity? There, there, there is not, it's not even conceptually possible to do that. And here it's the same, but at least in, with European agencies, you have some, at least some kind of de 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 uh, democracy behind it. And here it's just, well, you, now, now there's immunity and he can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. And the extent of this is much bigger because uh, I know also that in Basel, they have the Bank of Settlement. Yeah. Which is, I think, a very important organ of this whole... Yeah, Stop International Bank of yeah, IBS, I think. Which can take uh, the property away from people or something like that. I'm, I'm not a specialist in that. But mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that it's not only Gavi. It is um, a whole system organized. And it's very interesting to look at the historical chronology. Because at, in 2009 was the first year of the implementation of this huge health security governance. Mm -hmm. And that's when Bill Gates started to sign things and started mm -hmm. moving. That's, that's how we just learned about these uh, public-private partnerships. I mean, I've known for a long time that this exists, but from what uh, Frau Behren told us, uh, it becomes very clear that the private part of this public-private partnership has taken over control. And not only have they taken over control, they're immune from everything. They're not responsible for anything. This has got to stop. Well, I'm, I'm wondering um, what is the role of the Secretary General of the United Nations and of the Commission of the Human Rights here? Yeah. Because um, they, they are very interested. In, I made a manifesto, I can give it to you from Stockholm, that was the aim where I'm asking for a, um, a, a survey, an uh, enquête, une enquête <laughs> um, that they have to go and make order in, in everything. We have to review everything in the United Nations because the United Nations has been brought into this corporate agency. I have no doubt. They have not done anything since the beginning of this uh, COVID. Yes. I know. Well, we've, we've seen a few statements uh, from individuals that are members of the United Nations or work for the United Nations, which looked encouraging. But you're right. There's nothing, no official action, just like we've seen nothing from the churches. No official action that would have uh, told the population that there is help, that there's another way of doing this, that they would stop in to stop the uh, most egregious uh, activities of these criminals. We, this is a very clear picture now. We are, we, we're dealing with a bunch of criminals. Uh, but we've seen the, nothing from the United Nations. So that's another one of those organizations which we really seriously have to think about. Do we need them? They, they actually are meeting this week until uh, the 31st of March. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would really suggest you write to the High, uh, the Haut Commissaire, the the um, uh, high, high commissioner, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, high commissioner on human rights, uh, Bachelet, very quickly, and request point. really that things move and that the lawyers take a hand on this because we will, we will. We've spoken with human rights lawyers last night, okay. and we're in the process. Uh, they prepared something for us, and we just have to read it. It's, it's. Okay. We have so because much the, stuff to read. Mm -hmm. You saw the statement of the Secretary General no. that there is massive human rights violation and that the United Nations has to take care of it. Okay, very good. He said it last uh, two days ago. I've posted it on my Facebook right away. But so, but but fifty percent good. Fifty percent he's promoting the vaccine. So my hypothesis is that he has he's changing, but he cannot change completely. Otherwise, they will, you know, put him out or something, because he has had out, a, yeah. <laughs> a discussion with Pompeo uh, mm -hmm. a month ago or two months. So there is some signs that he is a good guy, but uh -huh. he cannot uh, move on. Okay, before. good to know. Okay, Frau Stuckelberger, I, <laughs> we are in a little bit of a bind because our next guest has only so much time. Uh, okay. Is there, is there something else that we, that we yeah, need to know? I'll, yeah. I'll tell you very quickly then. Um, I can send you an article from uh, David Fidler, who on the, um, who's, a, who's a lawyer, who has written an article on from International Sanitary Convention to Global Health Security. He was very worried of the international health regulation when he wrote this, saying that it is becoming a global governance. Um, he, he, so I think that would uh, clarify some things too. Very the good. second um, is that um, 
you have to make, see very clearly that the change of definitions of two major things in this pandemic that justifies this international uh, emergency uh, uh, declaration from all the countries, you know, is mortality and, uh, mortality and, and um, the number of cases that are sick. But it's not only that. They are taking definitions that they changed in 2009. Two things very important. The pandemic definition is, has changed from being the number of cases abnormally high in, in deaths and in disease to, oh, there are diseases that are spreading all over the world. Yeah, so they have changed in yeah, 2009. They took the, the definition uh, originally existed of three elements. One is that it's a worldwide disease, that there are a high number, and I think what they call it an, an abnormally or enormous high number of yeah. uh, uh, very sick people and an enormously high number of deaths. And they mm -hmm. cut out the last two and now uh, the, yeah, the only requirement is that we have a worldwide disease. Right. That means that any flu can, can be turned into a pandemic. Actually, any cold can yeah. be turned into a pandemic. Yeah. And, and it comes from WHO. And it yeah. is, I think, when Bill Gates started to change with his crowd, the definitions, uh, what we just talked about, the immunity, everything. And the, the other one, they, you know that the immunity, they changed the definition of the immunity, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it's now the only immunity is vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. das ist ganz wichtig, das wollen wir auch noch mal kurz ansprechen, die WHO. And this is probably no coincidence, because this no, happened no. in 2009, that's when Bill Gates appeared on the picture, right? Uh, yes, the, 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 the definition yeah, the of herd immunity is now, yeah. But immunity uh, is very recent. Yeah. Yes, but he's still there. And, and the last small thing, very rapid, you, yeah. uh, just that you, I'm sure that you saw that WHO has issued twice now, uh, in 7th of December and on 20th of January, uh, yeah. alert to an alert, medical alert to a product called PCR. It is written in small that it is alert. So it is intentionally criminal to say, alert, this PCR doesn't work with the CTs, you have to find the CTs, and to not say stop. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. So they, they, ha they have an official alert, meaning you can't use PCR tests to detect infections, and at the same time they're still pushing uh, the PCR test as the only means or the best means to detect infections. Yes. That is very and, interesting and, to know. And it's okay. intentional because they, they say in the, in the recommendation, you have to ask for the CT when you do the PCR. But in fact, I can um, give you the reference and you can look, because this is a key. They are intentionally putting a small alert. They are delaying the time and they're not saying stop it. Okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> also, I think, uh, well, I think we pretty much covered everything thus far. We're probably going to meet again, but okay. I'm very grateful for you uh, taking the time and being here with us today. Uh, same with Frau Behrendt. Also ich danke Ihnen beiden, Frau Stückelberger und Frau Behrendt. Das war extrem aufschlussreich uh, in Bereichen, über die wir bisher so nichts wussten. Super, danke. Sehr gut. Okay. Ich danke Ihnen für Ihre Arbeit auf. Es oh, ist danke, sehr danke. Geht nicht ohne Leute wie Sie. <lacht> okay, also bis dann. Ne? Okay, tschüss.